Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm at Rogue Brick Store in Fort Worth, Texas. We are surrounded by incredible custom LEGO creations as well as tons of amazing, rare, and unique LEGO products that you can purchase here at the store. But today I'm joined by Steve Witt, and he is going to be taking us through this amazing creation. This is a LEGO Halo ship, so if you want to kind of give us the background of what this particular ship is, and then we'll dive into the details. This is the um, UNSC Katara. It is a Paris-class heavy frigate. Um, from the Halo universe, and it's just, I always thought it had a great unique shape, and I obsessed over it and obsessed over it for a long time, just trying to, I would draw it on repeat until I finally found um, the one part that I was like, oh, well, this makes sense, this will work, um, and specifically, it's, it's this little, this little guy right here, which is, I believe they were used to put on, like, bumpers for hovercrafts. And when I found that part, I was like, okay, that achieves the shape that I want to achieve, and it looks smooth, and I can get, I can get lights into it, because I wanted to light the thing. Now, I will say that the lights don't work currently, because um, right before COVID happened, I snapped off a very important wire, and I haven't had a chance to reconnect with my light guy um, since then. But it does have somewhere around 300 lights in it. Um, which, if I'm able to take it to a con someday, I want to I wanna get those up and running again. Um, but the ship is built in, I think, so it's one, two, three, four, five parts. Yeah. Um, and I really just built it from the very front back. <laughs> um, I just, I started with this little section right here and then built my way around to the bottom. It cuts off right here. This whole section plugs in to the back of this and then settles down on top of this one, which which holds which this one actually stands on its own, so it's not holding it up. Um, but this one is actually holding the bottom in place because it's one of those things where you know it's a spaceship, so it doesn't have to obey the laws of gravity, which is just really frustrating when you're trying to build it out of a very heavy plastic medium. <laughs> Um, was it always going to be this big in your mind or did it just kind of grow as the project came together? What was the sort of planning process? I think I knew it was going to be big because I, I was, I've been around builders who build huge stuff and I was just like, I'm going to do that. Um, so I always knew it was going to be big, but I never really knew how big it was going to be because I, I, I didn't pre-plan just a whole lot. I, I just was like, well, this has to be about bleh. <laughs> and, and then I got there and I was like, well, then this part needs to be here. And, 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 and eventually just got to the end. Very scientific process. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but it just, it just ended up just growing and growing and growing. And I eventually, I had to buy a, um, I had one of those like fold out, you know, tables that, you know, folds in the middle, but it was starting to, to cave that table in. So I had to go out and buy a workbench at Lowe's. <laughs> Um, just to just to hold this um, so that I could build it um, and and yeah so it's I, I have an obsession though where I don't think anything should be flat or ordinary and it's it's kind of a, a weakness of mine where I, I I could have just had just a gray wall here but I wouldn't let myself do that yeah. and that's why I think it took me such a long time and also why I think my part count is off so terribly. Like I have it, I have it around 25,000 parts, but that's if you use the weight for two by four bricks to get there. And it's not, it's mostly one by one, one by two plates um, throughout the entire thing. It just stretches on and on and on. And, um, and if it ever looked a little bit plain, I went back, ripped it off and put something on there. Um, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit busy. And I admit that and I, uh, but from far back, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and I think you need that, though, because so much of it is that gray color that when you just start to get those flat walls, it can also become sort of boring very quickly. And so that detail and those greebles uh, make it much more interesting to look at, and you can kind of go section by section and really pick out interesting stuff. So with that in mind, what were some of the particular parts you used to add those details and that greebling? What types of parts do you find you know, work well for that? So, you know... What I burnt through the most was any modified one by one plate with something on the end of it. So whether it's a vertical clip, a horizontal clip, um, the headlight lamp mm -hmm. clip, um, I just peppered them throughout as many places as I could. Anywhere where there was something that could be jutting out or something that could set on top of something, um, that's, that's what I tried to put in. And, and then 
and well, the funny thing was I had a whole ton of parts um, that I'd collected over the years, but most of them were, were light gray, not dark gray. So even with all the parts I had, I still ended up having to source a ton of stuff just to finish this. Um, but also I did most of it, most of it is kind of going sideways. So if, if you're looking at this part going back, like, like I said, this is the element that I use as kind of my framing element. And then, you know, it worked its way around to the top and then just worked its way back. But the entire thing is basically built, um, built this way so that if you stood it up, then it would actually be, it would be going right. Yes. So, um, and actually that's the, there's a, there's a, a part of the expanse where they're talking about the Doniger from the expanse where they say it's, it's basically just an office building with engines on the back of it. And, and that's basically how I think when I build, it's like, okay, so it's going this way, but it's really meant to be this. Um, uh, and then beyond that, I also had to hollow it out so that I could get all the wiring and the lights in there, which never really has come to fruition, but you can kind of see, so you can pull off that and this and see where just how much interior stuff is in here to try and keep it sturdy. Cause the other thing I was worried about was it bending. Sure. Um, cause when you start to get long and heavy, you're inevitably just going to do this. Um, so there, I use so many of the Technic six by eight, <laughs> um, six by eight brick, you know, rectangle yeah. things just to get it in. Um, and the funny thing is if I really had to say which part, in detail I'm the most proud of. It's the part that nobody can see. I had the most fun building the bottom of this section. <laughs> and like to the point where I think I built that in a day. Like the whole model took me several years just because I, I am such a like a spastic ADHD builder where I would build intensely for a week and then I would walk away for six months. Um, and so like my build time got extended pretty significantly because of that. But, um, oh, this is backwards. Gotta get all the parts put up, back on properly. <laughs> yeah. I think I made it intuitive, but you never know. But yeah, so very long build process, which I think is understandable when you look at the size of this. How long is this whole build, do you know? Uh, there used to be a sheet here that said it. Uh, it's, it's roughly seven and a half feet. Okay. Yeah, that is, that's an incredible project. and. So you talked about kind of the, the, stru the structure and the weight and how you've got to kind of factor that in. How heavy is this whole thing and where are sort of the stress points there? What have you seen the, the happens to the bricks kind of over time? So as far as weight goes, I, I want it's somewhere on the level of 150 pounds if you throw it all together. Um, the, the stress points, sorry. You're good. I crossed the camera. Um, so this was the first panic point for me was that there's this gap here um, where it's just supposed to be floating. Again, they don't have to worry about, you know, building it because it's a spaceship. Um, and then just this is the only point that I wish, you know, was a little bit more invisible, but that's the best I could do was to get this going through here. But this is just a solid line going up and then it's solid frame going back to here and down. Um, this part kind of pulls apart a little bit just because of the weight because it's plugged into this with, you know, with basically I have out, you know, things that go out from it about this far and then they have Technic axles that it plugs into and from, sure. but it can, it only holds so much. And then if the surface is slightly canted, the, you know, the perfect meeting will, will do this and it's, it's, but I mean, nothing is perfectly flat, so there's no <laughs> way to ever get it. Um, this point right here is another one because this again this section is a is a big old heavy thing that's hanging off the back with no support underneath it so this section has to hold this section and this section are holding it down um but if it, it's drooping just a little bit but i don't know what i broke <laughs> um the main place where our, i have never really been able to get it to to fix completely is right here it's, it's stretched out on both sides where this section is leaning back ever so slightly, um, where if you're just looking at it, you don't notice it, but I notice it because I built it. Um, but those are the main kind of stress points. I haven't seen any like damage okay. in it. Um, so there, I've never had a, con a real concern about that, but that kind of comes from when, when I was at Lego, I was kind of trained by the, the master model builders there to, to build within technique because they're supposed to build within technique 
and and not go too crazy with it. So I always tried to make sure I was building within technique and not breaking any rules. Um, but it always that always just felt more solid to me as well. Sure. Um, I you can make some really cool looking stuff um, with illegal with with illegal build techniques, but I it it always felt a little too flimsy for me, especially if you know, you're gonna walk away from it from any amount of time. Speaking so. of techniques, one of the cool things you've done throughout the build is some of this lettering here. So how do you sort of incorporate that and build that into the, the gray kind of sections of the wall? So I knew I wanted to, uh, to do like brick belt lettering uh, because I always just think it looks so cool. There's, there's guys out there who would do like the train livery and would do like full on pictures and writing with it and just make it look so slick. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna do it myself. And I'm not a very good researcher. <laughs> so like, I know that there's all these resources for like how to do brick lettering. And I was like, nah, I got this. Um, and like, and then by the time you get to the end of it, it was like, I'm not ripping that out to redo it. So it's, it, that's what it is. But um, I, I love brick lettering and I love like brick picturing and stuff like that. Um, and I feel like I got it to where it is legible. <laughs> so I feel like I succeeded there. But I know that it could have been better if I had used cheese slopes or, or done some of the other fun techniques that way. But I, I really, yeah. yeah, I enjoyed it. I think on one side I had to, the seven doesn't actually connect to anything. I just had to kind of pop it in. I don't think it's this side. I think it's the other side where if you kind of tip it over, the seven just falls right out. But it was the only way I could get it to work. So with a build of this project, if someone else is wanting to tackle, maybe it's a spaceship or, or any other type of, of Lego build that's maybe of this scale, what types of things have you learned of building at this size? Like you said, you've spent a number of years doing this, so I'm sure you kind of figured things out as you went along there. You have to think about the internal structure. You can't just think about the, uh, you can't think about like what it will look like at the end. You have to think about, well, how is this gonna be held up? How is this going to, um, not just fall off the instant you put it down. Um, and then you have to think about also, how am I gonna connect everything to everything else so that it doesn't fall apart at the first notice? Um, like big builds are challenging in just the amount of time and effort, but also just the, how am I going to deal with this much weight? And again, I had the problem of where am I going to build this and where am I going to put this? <laughs> so um, so that's, that's kind of the big challenges I came through because I didn't want to take it apart once I was done. And that's where I got real lucky that uh, Rogue Brick um, was kind enough to let me put it here. And I've, I've been, been thankful ever since for that because I, I, I wanted to be able to keep it and show it, but you know, my wife was not going to let us stay in the house. <laughs> Um, no, that's amazing. That's what makes this store incredible. So uh, not only is your ship here, but as you look around the room, there's just like mind blowing creations all around here. And not only can, can you see those on display, if someone comes into the store, you can appreciate all of these amazing builds, but there's also tons of pieces and there are hundreds of thousands of bulk Lego pieces in here. So if you are working on your own custom Lego model, uh, say you want to build a seven and a half foot spaceship, you can source pieces for that. There's also just tons of sets as well. So really whatever you want Lego related, it's available uh, here at uh, Rogue Bricks and that's what makes the store so incredible. But for the foreseeable future, will this be on display? People want to, to come check it out in here? I believe so. Okay. Um, I, they've, they've not indicated to me they have any intention of removing it. Um, I do want to take it to, to a convention sometime soon. I'm hoping next year, but it would just be gone for a little while and then come back. Uh, but yeah, so it should be here. Perfect. So if you want to come in and see this and all the other incredible Lego creations here at Rogue Bricks, we'll have a link to their website in the description. You can find all that info, check them out here in the Fort Worth area and stop on by and see all the amazing Lego stuff they have available. Thanks for watching.